All right, good morning. It is really a pleasure to get to be here this morning among friends. I'm Kim Brooks, the Acting Provost and Vice President Academic here at Dalhousie University. On behalf of Dalhousie and the Faculty of Dentistry, I'd like to welcome you here. We're delighted to be hosting Minister Duclos and also Parliamentary Secretary Fillmore on campus for this exciting announcement. I'd like to acknowledge that Dalhousie University uh, and our communi community benefit from and sit on Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We pay our respect to Indigenous knowledges held by the Mi'kmaq people and to the wis wisdom of elders past, present, and emerging. We are grateful for the work the Faculty of Dentistry, Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and Accessibility Committee and programs such as plans, Indigenous health, and inclusive pathways which strive to increase diversity in our classrooms and in our healthcare professions have been doing. Thank you. We continue to work on these critically important programs in the recognition that we are all treaty people. We also recognize that African Nova Scotians are a distinct people whose histories, legacies, and contributions have enriched this part of Mi'kmaq known as Nova Scotia for over 400 years. It is my great pleasure to welcome back to campus our good friend, Andy Fillmore, and Member of Parliament for Halifax and Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Innovation, Science, Economic Development, Canada. Welcome back, Andy. Thanks so much, Kim, for that. It's a, it's a very kind uh, introduction, and it's really wonderful to be back. My name is Andy. I have the great privilege of being the MP uh, here in Halifax. And I was just telling a group uh, a few minutes ago that I grew up directly across Roby Street from the School of Dentistry, and as a kid, was really uh, excited to watch the building grow out of the ground. And as an adult and as the member of parliament in Halifax, really proud and excited to watch the impact of the school grow uh, and spread across the country. And I think even the world is alumni. I think we do good things everywhere. So it's wonderful to be back today. Thank you very much, Provost Dr. Brooks, uh, for having us today. And uh, Dr. Benjamin Davis, Dr. Uh, Leah uh, Rock, I've lost you, there you are. Um, thank you very much for making time and space for us and, and turning things upside down uh, for us today. I really do appreciate it. Um, we're, uh, we're doing it so that we can share the great news with you about what government is doing on a topic that I know is near and dear to all of you here at the Faculty of Dentistry, uh, that being dental care. Now, last week, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, Christia Freeland, introduced Budget 2023 in Ottawa. And as you all know, organizations can have a plan and, and uh, there can be lots of nice words in that plan, but that plan gets real when it goes into a budget. And that's what we saw last week. The federal budget is an absolutely crucial roadmap for what's important to Canadians and how we're going to get those things done. I believe that uh, budget 2023 is going to go down as one of those historic budgets uh, in our country, the budget that expanded access to dental care to everybody, no matter who you are, what your income is, what your ability to pay is, um, and all the good health, the holistic health benefits that uh, Dr. Seth reminded us of. I've lost Dr. Seth, there he is, uh, on our tour just now. All the holistic health benefits that flow from that kind of care. Uh, we, um, we're already seeing the benefits of the program here in Nova Scotia. I'm really happy to tell you that as of March 22nd, 2023, there have been 4,100 applicants for the interim uh, dental care plan. Uh, for children, that's for children under 12 years of age. And that's over $4 million of benefits being paid out in our province alone. So that's the sort of the very first phase of this dental program was, was for kids. In, here in Halifax, that means 700 kids have benefited from the program already, and we're just getting started. So that explains a little bit about the pride that I just uh, shared with you and why I'm so proud to serve in the House of Commons alongside our next speaker, Canada's Minister of Health, Jean-Yves Duclos, whom I'm now going to embarrass just a little bit with some elements from his resume. Uh, Minister Duclos is a very well-published author, a conference speaker and economics expert with a long and distinguished career in academia. Before entering politics, he was the director of the Department of Economics and a tenured professor, professor at Université Laval. And following his election in 2015, Minister Duclos was appointed Minister of Families, Children and Social Development and later assumed the role of President of the Treasury Board. And last October, in the midst of the ongoing uh, COVID-19 pandemic, Minister Tuplo took on a whole new set of challenges as Canada's newly appointed Minister of Health. And what a time to become Minister of Health, I must say. Uh, Jean-Yves Duclos is someone who knows how to get the job done. He's exactly the right person to be leading the dental care file for our government. So please uh, join us with you to tell us more, uh, Minister Jean-Yves Duclos.
Bonjour tout le monde. Good morning, everyone. Uh, among friends, as you just said, uh, Dr. Brooks, uh, et parlant d'amis, uh, évidemment, très, très important et très agréable pour moi d'être en compagnie de mon ami Andy Fillmore. Uh, merci, Andy, pour ton introduction. C'est un plaisir, évidemment, comme je l'ai dit, d'être dans, dans ta communauté et de pouvoir souligner à tout le monde le travail uh, formidable que tu fais pour non seulement comprendre, mais aussi défendre les intérêts euh, de ta communauté. Andy, as you well know, is a strong progressive voice for the constituents of Halifax, a champion in particular for improving health outcomes for all Canadians. During your time as parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, you know, Andy, that working with many others, you were able to advance important public infrastructure transportation projects for the community of Halifax and indirectly as parliamentary secretary for other projects, including my project, my uh, tramway project in Quebec City. Uh, and so, so uh, yeah, yeah, congratulations and thanks to, to you. And now as parliamentary secretary to uh, innovation, uh, science and uh, economic development, you are working and we're all working for good middle-class jobs, long-term jobs in a context in which humanity and our planet are changing remarkably quickly and require everyone's attention and everyone's input to help everyone uh, live uh, and, and prosper in dignity and safety. You're also a champion of healthy uh, living, including addressing as we all do, the social de determinants of health, of brain health, Uh, and of course, improving access and affordability to dental care. And in that context, I would like to acknowledge the presence of Dr. Benjamin Davy. Uh, Davis, sorry. Thank you, Benjamin. Now, you speak in French, remarkable, and you speak especially of the questions social, absolutely essential, to the fact that when we take care of the health, physical and mental health of people, we take care of our community. Uh, Kim Brooks, nice to see you. Also, uh, Kim, uh, being Provo and Vice President, you have a heavy uh, burden, a heavy leadership role to play in the team uh, context. Uh, and Anna, Anna Kwan, uh, Halifax novelist and filmmaker, whose latest work has explored the connection between oral health and mental health. And uh, Anna, we spoke briefly uh, earlier in the company of others. Uh, we look forward to hearing your story again. And we look forward to hearing your story as a echo, and equally importantly, and an, 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 an amplification of the voices of so many others and the stories of so many others who we want to remember when we speak about the importance of oral health. And I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the staff of Dalhousie University, uh, the staff of Dalhousie Dentistry in particular. You are our host today the only dental school in Atlantic Canada and serving more than 10,000 patients. I know that the staff at this facility are able to monitor and to see, as we discussed briefly, the positive effects that good dental care, early intervention and prevention can have in the lives of thousands and thousands of people in this community and elsewhere. Ceci étant dit, on sait à nouveau que la santé bucco-dentaire est essentielle à la santé générale. Lorsqu'ils ne sont pas traités, les problèmes dentaires deviennent des problèmes graves, des problèmes qui sont plus coûteux, plus douloureux et plus difficiles à traiter. Mais pour beaucoup de trop de personnes, évidemment, le coût des soins dentaires est hors de portée. Environ un tiers des Canadiens n'ont pas d'assurance pour couvrir leurs soins dentaires. And delaying preventative care can have wide-reaching consequences, including costlier treatments, worsening health outcomes, problems with sleep, time away from school and work, and mental health challenges. At the same time, the rising cost of living, uh, and we feel it every day, and more vulnerable Canadians feel it a lot more, uh, and inflation are making it challenging for many Canadians to afford necessities like uh, oral health care. So let us be clear, no one in this country should have to choose between paying for health care and paying for the bills at the end of the month. We shouldn't be able to tell the size of someone's paycheck just looking at their smile. 
nous ne devrions pas être en mesure de déterminer le salaire d'une personne en fonction de la qualité de son sourire. So the first phase of our approach, as Andy mentioned earlier, is to increase access to dental care for children under the age of 12. That started last December. That Canada Dental Benefit is now providing eligible parents and guardians with direct payments of up to $1,300 over two years per child to cover the cost of dental care for their children. Now, more than a quarter of a million of children across Canada have already benefited from the dental benefit, getting high, brighter smiles and healthier teeth in the process. But children are obviously not the only ones who need better access to affordable dental care. And that is why we announced in budget 2023, just a few days ago, an investment of $13 billion over five years, starting this fiscal year with $4.4 billion over, uh, over time yearly to implement the new Canada Dental Care Program. That program, that plan will provide dental coverage for uninsured Canadians with annual family income below $90,000 with no co-pays for those families below $70,000. We're working hard to get this longer term plan into place. By the end of 2023, our aim is to improve access to dental care to all children between the age of 18, seniors and people living with disabilities. The plan will further expand uh, until 2025 to include all uninsured Canadians with family income below $90,000. Eventually, the dental care program will therefore help up to 9 million Canadians, uninsured Canadians, get the dental care they need. In, in Nova Scotia, that's approximately 300,000 people who will benefit when the plan is totally into place from the new dental care plan. Now, in addition to the cost of dental services, we know that there are other factors which prevent Canadians from accessing the dental care they need, such as living in a remote, remote rural community or requiring special or specialized care because of a disability. And that's therefore why Budget 2023 also provides $250 million over three years, starting in 25-26, and $75 million over time to establish an oral health access fund. That fund will complement the Canadian Dental Care Plan by investing in measures that will address oral health gaps among more vulnerable populations. So in conclusion, it's a happy coincidence that we're making this announcement now at the beginning of April, because April is Oral Health Month, and a very happy coincidence that we're making this announcement this week, which happens to be the Dental Hygienist Week. Thank you, Andy, for arranging yes. all of that thing happening at the same time. And that therefore gives us a perfect opportunity again to repeat to everyone, most likely everyone understands that, but it's important to repeat that the health of our teeth and gums can directly affect our overall health and well-being, including mental health. And that's why providing Canadians with more equitable access to this important aspect of healthcare is so important. And that is why we are going to work together with your support, uh, Andy, so that the leadership, the wonderful leadership and partnership of the people at the Dalsy Dentistry can support, enhance, and inform the development of that dental care program. Thank you. Thanks so much, uh, Minister Duclo, for those for those excellent words and the great news that you bring. Um, Anna, are you ready? Okay, I'd like to now invite Anna Kwan to say a few words. Anna, as you heard from the minister, is a writer and a poet and a filmmaker here in uh, Nova Scotia. She recently won a documentary uh, pitch contest at the Lunenburg Doc Fest to develop a film, Me and My Teeth, which explores the connection between teeth and mental health. Anna, please. Thanks. So I'm just going to read my notes straight because I'm a little nervous. Um, it's about my relationship with the Northland Community Health Centre. Um, I first came to the Northland Community Health Centre as a medical patient while living in the north end of Halifax in a small options home. 
I'm a person with psychiatric experience and no one would hire me to sell stale donuts and I neglected dental care because I couldn't afford it. I became a dental patient at the Northern Community Health Center more than 20 years later and I'm grateful I have the chance to get hygiene fillings and extractions for free. But back to my story, after leaving the small options home, which is for those who don't know, like a small group home for people with different disabilities, in my case, psychiatric. Um, after leaving the small options home, which had given me a space and time to get healthier, I worked full time for a num full time hours for a number of years, and could and could afford dental care again. Even even when I worked less, I had a good dentist. But by two thousand seventeen. I was using a walker due to stenosis of the spine and had severe anemia and just couldn't work as much as before. I didn't want to go back to the days of no hygiene appointments because I couldn't afford them. My mom had always taken us kids for dental appointments every six months and I think it gave my teeth a good foundation, but I wanted to keep my teeth healthy. So I went to the North End Community Health Center for a cleaning. The dentistry and hygiene students who staff the dental program are attentive and conscientious. The appointments may be longer than the average appointment, but I like to be part of the student's education and have found them to be professional and confident enough to make me feel comfortable, but not too confident, which also makes me feel comfortable. Um, for the past year and a half, I've lived with my 90 year old dad. I'm cook and company and someday maybe his caregiver. So thankfully, I don't have to work full time right now. And because of the North End Community Health Center's dental clinic, I don't have to worry about the cost of my dental care. This helps relieve stress on my mental health, which is very important to maintaining my overall all well-being and ability to help my dad and to contribute to society as a creative person. I'm a poet and novelist, so I'm not rolling in cash. And now I'm embarking on making a documentary film uh, called Me and My Teeth about my mental health journey and about de mental and dental health care. And it features Francine um, Leach of the North End Community Health Center Dental Clinic, which who uh, the clinic, along with a man I call Sidewalk Guy, a man who had very few teeth, was one of the inspirations for my film. And I wish for Sidewalk Guy and for everyone that they had access to dental care the way I do at the NA. N-E-C-H-C. And like I say in the film, everyone deserves a reason and a chance to smile. So thank you, Minister DeClos, for your announcement today. I hope it makes a big difference to many people. Anna, thanks so much for sharing that story. And we all look forward to seeing your film. And how wonderful that you're able to make movie stars out of Francine and Sidewalk Guy <laughs> while you're doing it. They're going to be very grateful for that. Um, to tell us his perspective as a local dentist here in Halifax and a graduate of this very school and someone I know as a tireless community advocate here in Halifax who gives back to this community at every opportunity, please welcome my friend Dr. Ahmed Hussain. So according to the National Institute on Aging from the uh, Toronto Metropolitan University, uh, people aged 65 and older are uh, significantly uh, have less, less access to dental care than people in other age groups. And uh, there is a direct link between poor oral health and medical conditions such as dementia, diabetes and cardiovascular disease. That's why this National Dental Care Program is such a pivotal point in uh, Canadian healthcare history because it provides dignified access to oral health care, which is badly needed. My name is Ahmed Hussein, and as a partner at Dental Corp, uh, I'm proud to be part of the historic ECHO announcement. Uh, Dental Corp has 550 clinics nationally, over 8,500 employees, and we service over 5 million patients annually. And when you become a leader in an industry, the onus is on that organization to be the stewards in the industry. That's why we poured millions of dollars into supporting pediatric dental units in hospitals, as well as pouring millions of dollars in building infrastructure or renovating infrastructure uh, across dental schools in Canada. And uh, Minister Duclo, you had an opportunity to visit the Dental Corp Simulation Lab, which was a million dollar donation by Dental Corp. And uh, that's part of our commitment to uh, being stewards in the healthcare uh, environment. Um, 
we're also doing our part in creating uh, rural access to healthcare by working with the Minister of Immigration, uh, Minister Sean Fraser, in attracting international talent to Canada to be able to work in remote uh, rural uh, locations and thus uh, alleviating the burden on doctors and hospitals. Uh, it's no wonder why the federal government asked Dental Corp to uh, talk to the federal task force in helping to shape this program. So we welcome this initiative and this national dental care program in alleviating the financial burden on individuals who cannot afford dental care, but also creating realistic access to oral health care. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ahmed. Uh, I was working. Now, please invite the Dean of the School of Dentistry here, Dr. Benjamin Davis, to, uh, to close us out for the day. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, thank you, Minister Duclos, for visiting us here. Was it the easiest day to probably travel? And I really appreciate you having the courage to travel in Nova Scotia during April. Um, we would always, of course, welcome you, Dr. Duclos, but we particularly appreciate your visit coinciding with Oral Health Month. As you suggested, uh, this is our month to advocate for the oral health of everybody. So please, everybody out there, if you haven't actually been to see your dentist or dental hygienist uh, re uh, 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 recently, rather, please get in for a visit. First and foremost, we applaud the government for their tremendous commitment to oral health. Oral health has a direct impact on our overall health and our mental well being. Oral diseases disproportionately impact the poor the vulnerable, the marginalized populations, which include indigenous, racialized, the young, the elderly, persons living with disabilities, and the institutionalized. And it's, there is a very strong and consistent association between socioeconomic status and the prevalence and severity of oral diseases. Every day in our clinics, we witness firsthand the severe consequences of oral disease. And these consequences are on the physical, and mental well-being of our patients. Decreased productivity, a loss of educational and job opportunities, and further social marginalization. Oral disease is a public health crisis. And Canada is not alone in acknowledging this. The WHO recognizes that oral disease is a public health crisis worldwide and has resolved that oral health care should be included in universal health. So congratulations, Canada, for taking a huge leap towards realizing this goal. The 10 Canadian faculties of dentistry and 33 schools of dental hygiene have an extensive network of nearly 150 facilities, including the dental hospital, which you just visited this morning, community-based outreach clinics like the North End Community Health Clinic, and affiliated hospital clinics. We are already treating among the most vulnerable and marginalized populations in the country. We know we can do more, see more patients and establish clinics in underserved communities, but we will need greater support and investment. We look forward to partnering with Health Canada so that the new Canada Dental Plan benefits not only patients, but also our students who are the future of oral health care in this country. So on behalf of all Canadians, thank you, Minister Duclos and everyone in Parliament who courageously supported this bold initiative. Your support for the health of Canadians is truly appreciated. Thank you. At this point, Andy, I'm not sure if you're turning over to the media or how we're going to transition to media. You will. Okay. Little frozen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, MP Fillmore, um, Minister Cho, you, you can go back to the microphone for the Q&A session. So we'll start uh, with people at the ground. I don't think we have any reporters in the room. So Tammy, I'll pass it over to you online. We will now proceed to questions from journalists on Zoom. If you are a reporter and wish to ask a question, please use the raise your hand function. We ask that you limit yourself to one question and one follow-up. Unless I have stated it, please indicate your name and media outlet before asking your question. Nous allons maintenant prendre des questions des journalistes sur le Zoom. Si vous êtes journaliste et vous désirez poser une question, veuillez utiliser l'option de lever la main. Merci de vous limiter à une question et un suivi. Sauf si je l'ai dit, veuillez 
identifiez votre nom et votre média avant de poser votre question. I'm sure you all feel relieved that there are no questions yeah. because if the questions had been difficult, uh, we would have had many experts uh, uh, to answer them. Uh, we were, we we're such a great company today that we had, Andy and I, we had no fear when it came to answering the, the, the questions on, on why oral health uh, care is so important. Uh, yeah. you. So, Tammy, if we don't have any questions, we'll close the, um, uh, the press conference. I will invite every people that were speaking and everyone that want to be in front to take uh, a picture. And um, also thanks to De La Rose University for hosting us today. Thank you. And maybe we can have this picture in front of this yeah. wonderful uh, sign, huh? Yeah. Huh?